Hello, in England, we're doing a Kutani vase. Now, Kutani is Japanese. Everyone wants Chinese vases. Uh, there is a market, obviously, for, for Japanese vases. They were very good, too, at their skill. And I would say that Japanese vases are fairly numerous in England, as, as Chinese ones are. But the Japanese vases always did and still are tracking at a lower level, like for like, with the the Chinese versions. Now, this is a Meiji period. Meiji period really is a very wide time span. It's rather like saying something Victorian, Meiji going through to 1910 or thereabouts. So it's a Meiji period, it's a reliably Meiji period. You have to be very careful with these Japanese pots because they still make them now. And they made them all through the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Very much the same, very well painted still. So be aware that when you're buying an antique looking pot, it can be an antique style pot or not an antique pot. It's rather like the Chinese pottery. They're still making them, trying to look, make them look old. And it's, it's, it can be very difficult if you're careless in your buying. So I'll show you this vase and I'll try and get across the feel. And that's the only way really to, to educate someone in what, the, what to buy. There's various, various aspects. And you have to look at all these different aspects. You have to piece together what you're buying. You have to uh, use all, all six, six senses to buy Chinese pottery and Japanese pottery, Oriental pottery. So I'll start at the, at the top. Right, damage. That's been damaged, it's been stuck together. It hasn't been stuck together very well. But it hasn't been stuck together by a restorer so it hasn't been masked. So at least you know what you're buying. When, when these are restored, uh, they tend to have a putty-like, the repairs have a putty-like feel, and they lack hardness, the repairs, and the colours often are soft colours, not, not quite spot on. So when you're buying, you have to be aware of potential repairs. And the way to find a repair is to apply the tooth to it. If you get no immediate resistance, and they're gummy and soft, then it's going to be a repair. There's no, there's no other explanation, it will be a repair. If it's hard and cold and resists your tooth, then it's going to be pottery or probably the original. And I would say that in England now, in a sale room, 40% of Japanese vases will have had repairs done by the trade, and they will be, they will be fixed, and they will be repaired. That's just a matter of fact. So we've talked about damage, we've talked about visible damage, we've talked about hidden damage. Sometimes you'll find a little crack with very nice staples in, literally metal staples. That's a sign of an old repair. It wouldn't have bothered to have repaired a junky old thing. So that's a nice thing to see staples. Uh, it's a great shame it's damaged. Uh, it's more than half the value of the, of the item. But you will find these without any damage, we have got them. And um, it's very, very hard also to find perfect Chinese pot pots around England, but they are there, they, they really are still there. Right, what, what you're looking for with these is, you want to, to buy one with no seam on it. If you have a seam, it's going to be later, it's going to be mass produced, it's going to be less worth less. What you're looking for is something that's been spun, uh, spun out on a, you know, thrown on a, on a potter's wheel. So you have to look inside it. And you're, you're trying to find rings, finger marks. Now you can feel you can feel it in that and you can see it. But be aware that, that a skilled copier will can put those in afterwards. Even if it's pressed, people can apply rings. So still look for seams. I say that is not seamed. I would say that is has got hand marks. I would say that was made on a, on a wheel by a potter. It is porcelain. It is not white glazed pottery or earthenware or stoneware. It's porcelain. Porcelain is hard. It's very um, it's vitreous. It's uh, gla it's glass like, and um, to a degree, uh, it lets light through. Less on less so on a, on a Japanese pot or a Chinese pot, but that is the essence of, of porcelain. So, we look at the gilding. This is on. A red background or peachy background. This is what they call Kutani, and there's a huge amount of Kutani. Uh, much of it is uh, called export ware, which is true, it was made 
to be brought to Europe or, or sold to tourists to bring to Europe. And there are varying qualities. There's very cheap export ware, where they don't use much gold or no gold. And there's very, very fine export ware. And there is, of course, a domestic market as well. You're going to, are really only, around Europe, you're really only going to see the export ware, obviously. Uh, you will see some special pieces of Japanese pottery, which came in through the aristocrats or through the noble people or the army services. But on the whole, it's export ware. So within the umbrella of export ware, this is about as good as it gets before it's really, really special grade. The reason it's good is because there's a lot of gold in it. Now, this is not, be careful when I say a lot of gold, it's not just slathered in gold. There's a lot of well-applied gold. Some of the, the, the later copies will just, just use indiscriminate amounts of gold, but everywhere you look on here, there is gold. And the detail is different of where you look. It's not the same. It's not just painted on blocks of gold. The detail is absolutely astounding. You've got a scene here of the fact that they're, 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 they are pheasants. I don't know what pheasants they are. They could be quails, I suppose. I suspect they're golden pheasants. Here you've got a char some, some characters. I don't know what they are. Um, it's going to be a philosopher or a priest. I don't know. But they haven't got swords, which means they're not warriors. Cherry blossom, pine, each of the needles is gold. Willow, temple. Down to the bottom you've got beautiful, beautiful work all the way around. You've got fantastic work on these bird-like creatures with wings, tiny dots around the eye, around the eyes. Really, really nice thing. Beautiful, beautiful size. It's really a large piece of pottery. On the bottom you've got, you do find some crustiness on the bottom of these pots. These are characters which are hand-painted, they're not transfers. I don't know what it, what it says. I would say that's 1880, 1890. Um, I like the size. I, I think the, the damage can be forgiven and the, the old repair can be left. Uh, the bits are all there. Someone one day will probably fix it, but I think it's, it's best left. Um, with the money it could cost to, to have it repaired, you can buy another one. So, one of those. Anyway, I've tried to talk to you about the, the pottery. I hope I've given you some interesting opinions on it. Thanks for having a look. This is collection from England, this one.